Proudly we hail. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Air Force to bring you this story. As proudly we hail another airman of the United States Air Force. Our story today is entitled, The Transfer. Your Air Force provides its airmen with every opportunity to develop any abilities they may have. But in our story today, a young airman discovers that much of it depends on oneself. As proudly we hail the United States Air Force, our first act curtain will rise in just one moment. You know, many times a man is killed in a particular job, yet he's unable to find a use for it. Has this happened to you? Are you a service veteran with a service game skill that's just going to waste? Well, if you are, then you listen, because you may be able to put that skill to work as a member of the United States Air Force. Right now, the Air Force needs experience and know-how gained in all the armed forces. If you possess one of the critical skills needed to keep America's air defense strong, you can put that experience to work in the Air Force and do so at a higher grade and with higher pay than you may realize. You've earned credits toward a valuable retirement income. So protect that initial investment. For full details... You write or visit your nearest Air Force recruiter. Ask for the prior serviceman's folder. This folder will show you why. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. And now your Air Force presents the proudly we held production, The Transfer. <laughs> kind of an occasion that doesn't require many words. But is your commander speaking to such raw members of the base? A speech is a speech, said. you might say, but if your airman first class Bart Andrews, radio repairman of a B-47, which is who and what I am, this particular speech by the base commander somehow recalls another speech given a few months ago at a base 1,000 miles from here by me. It um, wasn't a speech exactly, more of a farewell talk. I was an instructor that in course number 30130. That's the aircraft radio repairman course given at Keesler Air Force Base. 160 academic days long. And that day was the 160th. Hey, well, good speech, Bart. Say, Bart, have you got any extra chalk? Uh, yeah. Yeah, here's some. Thanks. Seems like I'm lost without a piece of chalk in my hand. Well, what's the matter, Bart? You look like you're a thousand miles from here. Maybe I am. I just said goodbye to my fourth class started me thinking. And what about? You know, it, it's a peculiar thing. I, I've been an instructor here ever since they retained me when I finished the course. Sure. That's how they get the best. The present company, not excluded. No, I wasn't thinking of that. I was just trying to figure out how long it's been. A year and a half. Yeah. Huh? Boy, I'd like to be a radio repair man, in fact, not only in theater. Oh, I get you, Bart. you got to remember there's a big difference between working in the classroom and the machines on the flight line. Well... I better get back to work. Thanks a lot for the talk. Just about then, my next class came in, and I soon forgot about my momentary yearning. Actually, that's what they were, momentary. Because in spite of what I told Jim, I really was satisfied with what I was doing. And I could have gone on a long time as I was if it hadn't been for something that happened that very day when I stopped by at the orderly room on my way to the barracks. Oh, hello there, Andrews. You're just the man I'm looking for. Well, what's up, Sergeant? Don't tell me I'm on CQ already. No. You won't have to worry about CQ anymore. Around here, anyway. I won't. Hey, this sounds too good to be true. I just got word today from headquarters. Transfer orders are on their way down for you. Transfer? Me? Yep. To a SAC base in South Carolina. SAC? Does that mean I'll be out of the classroom and onto the line? Mm, I would think so. Well, I'll be darned. Hey. <laughs> They must have a crystal ball up there at headquarters. Say, Sergeant, uh, uh, any particular reason that I'm being transferred? Oh, none in particular, except that radio repairmen are always needed. And 2nd Air Force rotation policy is set up to give 
every M and every chance to broaden themselves. But wherever you're going, I'm sure you'll do a good job. Before I knew it, I found myself on an Air Force transport plane flying toward my new station. And for the first time since I got my orders, I had time to reflect. And for the first time, I began to get some doubts. Sitting next to me was an airman first class by the name of Hank Taylor, who was also being transferred to the same base. And we uh, sort of got into a conversation. You've got doubts? Sure, anybody does who's going to a new outfit. Happens to me every time. No, I, I don't mean that way. Look, I've been an instructor ever since I've been in the Air Force, practically. This is what you might call my first field assignment. Oh, I see. Something I've wanted, but now, well, gee, how do I know I can make the transition from classroom to aircraft okay? I know what you mean. I've been through the mill myself. I was an instructor on repairing the old Norden bomb site, and then later an actual repairman. When they developed this K-series system, I had to go back to school and teach again. And now, once more to the line. <laughs> Gold hat to me. Did you have any trouble along the way? Well, there's a difference, all right. But if you keep on your toes, you won't have any trouble. Just follow the book. Yeah, that's what I always told my class. Now I'll have to start telling myself. Sure. And before you know it, you'll be wondering why you even thought about it. Hank was an optimistic kind of fellow. Maybe too optimistic in the light of what happened later. But his chatter kept me from being bothered too much about what was ahead of me. And at the end of the day, we landed at our new base and checked in at base headquarters. My assignment, to report to Hangar Number 3 to Sergeant Daly, Ground Crew Chief of Aircraft 10732. All right, just make yourself at home for a few minutes, Andrew. The AC, Captain Wilson, will be here shortly to say a few words. Right. Say, is that 10732? Uh, that's her. You're looking at the best kind of ship in the Air Force, a B-47. Looks like she's in pretty good shape. Uh, she should be, fresh out of the factory. But that's what we're going to do. Find out if she's as good as she looks. Now, you go on over and make yourself acquainted with the ground crew until the captain gets here. Okay, Sarge. Hey, hey, Bart. Hank, what are you doing here? Well, the same thing you are, I guess. Waiting. I got orders to report here. Yeah, so did I. What's up, do you think? 10732. That is, we got to see that she gets up and stays up. Oh, yeah? Uh-huh. We got to make her ready for a shakedown flight. Hey, this must be the captain coming All out. right, man. Give me your attention. This is Captain Wilson, AC of 10732. I won't take up much of your time. I just wanted to meet firsthand the men who are going to be responsible for finding and removing any bugs my new baby here might have. And I just want to tell you in advance that I'd appreciate it if you find as many as you can while she's still on the ground. <laughs> but now that I've had a look at you, I know I won't have anything to worry about. If there's anything I can do for you, let me know through Sergeant Daly here. Now, if all goes well, we'll have the first flight at 1,300 hours this Friday. That's all. Take over, Sergeant Daly. In a few minutes, I was standing inside the cabin. We had worked with mock-ups of B-47 radio systems back at Keesler, and I knew them backwards and forwards. But to see all this brand new equipment, not as a mock-up, but as the real thing, well, all I can say is that it was a thrill. After soaking it in, I plunged right into going over the WHF, the HF, the omnidirectional equipment, radio compass, and the interphone system, checking out every last little connection and fuse. And by the time Friday afternoon arrived, I knew the radio system was okay as far as I could determine. That afternoon, shortly before takeoff time, Hank and I were having a coffee in the hangar. Well, as far as I'm concerned, 10732 is as ready now as she'll ever be. Yeah, me too. And yeah, we'll know pretty soon now. A five-hour trial navigational and bombing run should uncover anything the checking couldn't. I don't know what that would be, at least with the radio system. You know, Hank, that, that's really a fabulous radio setup the B-47 has. <laughs> what do you think the K-System series is? Why, they've got things in that that haven't even been invented yet. <laughs> so it seems to me sometimes. Yeah, I know what you mean. Say, Bart, I haven't had a chance to ask you... How are you feeling about your transfer by now? Well, in a job like this, how can you help feel but good? When you do something here, you can see the results. Better than teaching guys something and never knowing what happens after they leave you. No, 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 I feel fine. Hey, look, look, there she goes. Smooth, man, smooth. She's off. 
All you gotta do now is wait. Yeah. What's the matter? Something wrong, Bob? I don't know. It's a funny thing, but just as the wheels left the ground, I got an odd kind of feeling. You know, something was warning me. Warning you? Yeah. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? No, no. I experienced something like that once myself, but what could be wrong? It seemed to be a normal takeoff. Yes, yes, it did. Never mind. Come on, let's go back to the line shop. Okay. Hey, wait a minute, Bob. The ship is circling the field. Circling? Wasn't supposed to do that, was it? No. This is Sergeant Paley calling the ground crew of 10732. Report to the debriefing room immediately. Bart, I don't think you were so far wrong at that. Oh, I guess I wasn't. We better get over there. Let's go. We doubled up to the debriefing room, but when we got there with the rest of the crew, we were still in the dark as to what was wrong because Sergeant Daly wasn't there. For the next hour, we waited while the ship circled around the field to lighten its fuel load, as we found out later. Finally, it landed, and in a few minutes, Captain Wilson and Sergeant Daly entered the room. And before they even said anything, I knew they were looking for me. You are listening to the proudly we held production of The Transfer. And we will return in just one moment for our second act. Here's important news for all ex-servicemen. You may be qualified to enlist in the United States Air Force at a higher grade and at higher pay than you may realize. The United States Air Force has instituted a new policy that offers big new benefits to veterans of all the armed forces. The Air Force needs men who are experienced in critical skills, skills required to keep America's air defense strong. If you have training in these skills, then the Air Force wants you. And they'll put you right on the job. So for full details, you write or visit your nearest Air Force recruiter right away. Ask him for the folder for prior servicemen. You'll see how you can put your service gain skills to work to your best advantage. Remember, you've earned credits toward a fine retirement while in the service. So protect your initial investment as an airman. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. You are listening to Proudly We Hail... And now we present the second act of The Transfer. If there's one thing I've learned since I've been here at this base, it's that I have a good sense of intuition. For it turned out that I was right that day when Captain Wilson and Sergeant Daly came into the debriefing room. Andrews, Captain wants to talk to you. Yes, sir. As you can see, Andrews, we had to abort this flight. Yes, sir. So, some, something wrong with the radio system? Yes. Our interphone conked out on us. Well, did, did it go out completely, sir? No, but my pilot and I couldn't understand each other. And I don't have to tell you, we couldn't get very far with a condition like that. According to the checklist, you checked it out okay. Well, that's right, Sergeant. I did, and it was okay. I'm sure it was, but you'd better take a look at it. I'd like to get this flight in today. Okay? Yes, sir. Right away. Too so bad it didn't take me long to hustle down to the flight line with my tool kit. And the first thing I did was to check the interphone amplifier connection. They were okay, so I moved on to the tubes. And that's where I found the trouble. Our tube was defective. It must have gone bad on the takeoff. I replaced it and reported job completed to Sergeant Daly. Shortly after that, Captain Wilson took off once more. Well, it looks like there's nothing wrong this time. Yeah. You wonder sometimes how a piece of equipment can foul up so suddenly like that tube did. Brand new, perfect condition one minute, and the next, powie. <laughs> I guess there's nothing in this world 100% perfect. You know, Hank, I used to hammer home to my classes what a responsibility rests on technicians. But I never knew... Sure, there's a difference, all right, between teaching responsibility and actually bearing it. Especially this kind, where you've got men's lives resting in your hands. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm finding that out, Hank. I am sure finding it out. Later that evening, the ship returned. And at the debriefing, we found out that nothing had occurred that required repairing. The ship was okay. During the next few weeks, I lost contact with 10732 because I was called out to serve as other B-47s in the squadron. However, one morning, I got a work order from our control room to report once more to Sergeant Daly at the debriefing room. 
tank was there, too. Hi, Bart. Wonder what's cooking with 10732. Well, here comes Captain Wilson. I guess we'll find out. Good morning, man. Good morning, Hi. sir. Orders have come down for my ship and crew to report to Barksdale three weeks from today. The annual SAC Marathon Bombing and Navigation Competition meet will be held starting then. And we have been chosen to represent the squadron on the basis of our past records with other units. Now, I don't have to tell you, it's going to be rugged. And that's why you men are here. We're going to need the best maintenance men to keep our ship in the air. And according to Sergeant Daly, you men are it. From now on, until the meet is finished... We're all going to practice together day after day until we are a team that, even though we're brand new, will open their eyes down there at Barksdale. The next three weeks, as the captain had told us, 10732 did nothing but run trial bombing and navigational flights similar to those it would encounter at Barksdale. Until eventually the day came when 10732 took off for Barksdale with us, the ground crew, not far behind in a KC-97 tanker plane. Well, it won't be long now. No. How do you think we'll make out, Hank? Well, it's hard to say. Naturally, I'm hoping we'll win it. For more reasons than one. Well, how's that? Well, if we come in on top, we'll each get a spot promotion. And there's nothing I'd like better than an arm full of stripes. <laughs> they ain't that heavy. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. They got it a 3,000-mile course three times and with one actual bomb and three radar drops each flight. Brother. And if they're five minutes late taking off, we're automatically out of the running. Sure, it's tough. We're competing with the sharpest crews in the Air Force, too. And when you look at it realistically, <laughs> we don't have much of a chance. No? No, these other outfits have been doing nothing but training. Not for this meet, but for the real thing, if and when it comes. They've been doing it for years now, and we're more or less newcomers. Yeah, I guess we don't have much of a chance, then, unless we're lucky. Well, it, it, it looks that way, Sergeant Daly. Well, let me tell you. We do have a chance. And it doesn't depend only on luck. It depends on something else, too. What's that? On how much you, we, put out. We've got the best equipment and machines in the world, the best men to fly them. But if we don't have the right kind of crew spirit, well, we might as well go back now. Well, how do you know we haven't got it? I don't know. We haven't been together long enough to find out. It's up to you to prove it, one way or another. What Sergeant Daly said about crew spirit struck home to me, for that's what I'd been looking for, why I'd wanted to get out on the line, to become a part of a group all pitching in together to accomplish something above and beyond oneself. But in the final analysis, it all boiled down to what kind of stuff was inside each man. And about one of those men, myself, I still wasn't sure. After we arrived at Barksdale, we readied the ship for her first flight, and in no time at all, it seems, she had taken off and returned. Hey, hey, fellas, fellas. Yeah. Sergeant Daly will be down in a minute with the results. He said to stand by. Any advance dope, Hank? Nope, except I know they didn't have any boondockers. Oh, good. Hey, here comes Daly now. All right, men. Here it is. Oh, I don't have the exact figures, but the Omaha and Denver bombs were good. Very good. We were a little off on the Roseville Reservoir, but not too much. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'll hold it. Hold it, boys. But we've still got two more to make. Now, next ETD is 2400 Thursday night. Make sure she's okay by then. That's all. Pressure, tension, work. We all learned the meanings of those words. But I had to learn the hard way. At 2330 Thursday, I was checking the HF wire antenna while Captain Wilson completed his outside pre-flight check. The power cart was plugged in, and as I started down the ladder, it happened. For a moment, I couldn't believe my eyes. But at the bottom of the power cart, I saw the flicker of flame. I knew it was loaded with 20 gallons of 100-octane gas, and right above it was a jet fuel tank. Hey, cart man! The cart's on fire! Disconnect! Disconnect! Okay. Here, I'll take the front steering bar. Let's get it away from the ship. Quick! Yo! Come on, come on, come on. Now, that's it, that's it. Now, where's the fire bottom? Captain Wilson's coming with it now. All right, stand back, man. Yeah, that does it. Now, what happened? I don't know, sir. Must have been a short circuit. Probably. You'd better dig up another cart pronto. I'll try, sir, but it won't be easy. Most of them are new. You've got to. ETD is only 20 minutes away. Yes, sir. Oh, Andrews. Yes, sir. I want to see you right after we return. Right. Now, you run along and help that man find a cart. 
We found a cart all right, but barely in time enough for the ship to make its ETD. Look that close, Dave. Yeah, you said it, Frank, but I think it was a little more than that for me. How's that? Captain Wilson wants to talk to me after the flight. What about? I don't know, but I have a hunch he thinks what I think, that I, I should have grabbed the fire bottle first instead of pulling the cart away. Why? Well, I, I should have put the fire out before doing anything else. That's what the fire bottle's there for. You couldn't have done either first. You're imagining things. No, 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 Frank. There's a lot more to the field than just repairing a radio. Boy, maybe I better ask for a transfer back to Keesler. Maybe I won't have to. Captain Wilson might do it for me. Well, that's the story, men. We didn't do too badly this second flight, considering everything. At least we're still in the running. Now we'd all better get some sleep. Our third and final flight is for tomorrow at 2400, and you know what that means. Good night. Good night. Oh, uh, Andrews, come here a moment, will you? Yes, sir, Captain Wilson. About that fire in the power cart before we took off. Yes, sir, I've been thinking about it. And, and I... so have I. You know, if it hadn't been for what you did, we might never have made our ETD, and we'd be completely out of the contest by now. But, sir, you mean I did the right thing? Of course. It was quick thinking combined with action. I couldn't ask any more from any man in my crew, whether flying or ground. Now get yourself some sleep. You'll need it. Yes, sir, Captain. Yes, sir. As you can imagine, I felt pretty good after that. But the next morning, after listening to Sergeant Daly, I felt even better. We, we were gathered in the line shop waiting for Captain Wilson to return from his third and final bombing run. Yes, sir, man. Things don't look bad. There's only one B-47 now that's ahead of us. And if all goes well... well... You don't have to worry, Sergeant. Not with Captain Wilson up there. He's quite a man. I found that out last night. Sure, he's quite a man, Andrews. Takes a man to go through what he and his crew go through when they fly a B-47 on a mission. You ever stop to think what it's like to sit in one position for 16 hours? Oh, I remember once I drove a car that long. And when I got out... Oh, brother. That's right. Those guys up there got about 45 pounds of stuff on their back. While the helmet weighs six or seven pounds, the... Parachute straps cut right into the bones. Three guys pushing along 200,000 pounds of plane on sheer brains, nerve, and guts. Say, how much does the Air Force say a B-47 pilot is worth? 500,000 bucks. Well, <laughs> when you put it that way, all I can say is he's worth it. And a lot more. Can't be measured in dollars and cents. There's our ship coming back. You mean you can tell by the sound? By the sound? Oh, maybe. Maybe something else. Someday you'll know what I mean. I knew what he meant. And I'm sure the rest of the crew did, too. We didn't know yet whether our ship had come out first or not, but we did know this, that we had gone through a pretty big thing together. And we'd be ready to go through a lot more together. On the last day, yesterday, all the final scores were posted on the big board. And at the top of the list... 10732! Oh, Yippee! We did it! We did it! Yeah. I'm sure if there had been time, Barksdale Air Force Base would have been the scene of a celebration that would have long remembered. But there wasn't. We had to get ready to return to our base. The next morning, this morning, we were once more airborne in our KC-97 on our way back. Each of us one stripe richer. And it was just about 20 minutes ago that our plane arrived over the field here. Well, we're here, fellas. Yes, sir, and am I glad to get back. How yeah, you said it. Hey, look, you all see what I see? What? I see our ship, good old 10732. I love you. Yeah, but look there by the control tower. Why, there's the band and a bunch of people. <laughs> and get a load of that. A red carpet. You mean that's all for little old us? Gosh, and I, I don't even have a speech ready. Why, ladies and gentlemen, it, it gives me great pleasure. To... And now here we are, sitting rather uncomfortably on the platform. Well, maybe embarrassed would be a better word. I don't think Hank will get a chance to make the speech he started to rehearse a few moments ago upstairs, but somebody else will. And now the man you're all waiting to hear, Captain Wilson. Thank you, sir. I'm not much at making speeches, but I just want to say this. Whatever we've been able to do down there at Barksdale would never have been done without our ground crew, 
who kept our ship in the air by sweating it out 20 hours a day. And they were able to do it only because each man knew how to and did his job well. Thank you. They're applauding, and the band is beginning to play. But if there's anything I'll always remember, it's the way the captain looked at me when he said those words about each man doing his job well. Sort of, sort of silent salute or something. And you can bet it was one salute that I returned right from the heart. You know, it's often been said that to speak in terms of a man's interest is to win that man as your friend. Well, that's what the friendly people at your United States Air Force recruiting stations all over the country are doing every day. They're telling hundreds of career-minded young men about the outstanding opportunities available in the United States Air Force. They're describing career opportunities that suit every young man's interests and aptitudes. For example, well, if you're an amateur photographer, you can turn your basic knowledge into a colorful and highly interesting career by taking advantage of the free training available in the Air Force Photography School. You know, it's the world's finest. Then again, on the other hand, well, maybe you're interested in the new field of guided missiles and rocket propulsion. Here, too, you can get free training that qualifies you as one of the best military technicians in the world. Whatever your interests, your Air Force has a job for you. So you visit your nearest Air Force recruiting station at your earliest opportunity. Find out how you can become an airman in the United States Air Force. It's the career opportunity of a lifetime. I also want to talk to all you young fellows out there that have served a tour of duty. If you're a service veteran, then you think about this for just one moment. Are you making the most of your service game skills? Well, here's something you should know. You may qualify to enlist in the United States Air Force in a grave that'll be a real pleasant surprise. You see, right now, the Air Force needs men with training and experience gained in all the armed forces. If you're skilled in one of the critical jobs needed to keep America's air defense strong... Then the Air Force offers you an opportunity to put those skills to work to your best advantage. Remember, fellas, you've already earned credits toward a valuable retirement policy. So why not protect your initial investment? Your Air Force recruiter has a prior serviceman's folder that will give you full details. So you go down and see him right away, okay? Remember, serve yourself, serve your country by becoming an airman. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force. And this is Dick Herbert speaking, inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. (laughs) 